this desert startup could be the future of food. Well, welcome to our greenhouse in the desert. Uh, we're in the center of Abu Dhabi, and we've formed a very high-tech climate-controlled greenhouse that is really the first of its kind in the Middle East, looking to grow year-round premium quality fresh produce here in one of the harshest climates in the world. Sky Kurtz and his team started Pure Harvest in 2016. Now, his high-tech tomatoes are transforming how and where we grow food. Outside temperatures often spike beyond 40 degrees Celsius, but in here, it's like summer in the Mediterranean. The greenhouse uses sensors and software to adjust sunlight, temperature and humidity. There's no soil or pesticides, just an army of bumblebees and the expertise of head grower Jan Prins. The more sunlight, the more sugars in the tomato. So that makes the tomatoes here extremely tasty. These high quality, sustainably produced tomatoes are the first of their kind in the Middle East. And most importantly, they can be produced all year round. And that's opening up a big market opportunity. 80% of food here is imported because of a lack of arable land and extreme temperatures. So improving food security is a top national priority. Pure Harvest says the UAE's $6.5 billion imported produce sector is ripe for the picking. So Majid, how do you get it from the vine into the consumer's hands? Uh, so essentially we harvest actually every single day almost and uh, we, it goes into a pack house and then we put it into a package. Pure Harvest says its greenhouse has 10 to 14 times the yield per metre of a conventional farm but uses a fraction of the water. Now it's ready to test investor appetite, seeking over $20 million in equity to scale its concept to countries like Saudi Arabia. What we have achieved right now in terms of uh, production per square meter or the yield per square meter uh, can be replicated on a much larger scale and then we can produce a lot more, right? And then we can also do that more cost effectively. So in any case, the, the main driver is having a larger footprint and a stepwise production capacity. We are mimicking a Mediterranean climate here in the, the heart of the Abu Dhabi desert that hits 53 degrees right, Celsius. Um, so the reason I mention that is in that climate quarter, we can grow just about anything. Tomatoes, capsicum, cucumber, strawberry, aubergine, lettuce, microgreens, herbs, just about anything. Controlled environment agriculture is showing great promise in the Middle East, creating jobs, diversifying economies, and ultimately helping the region to grow more with less. Analysts say access to nutritious food will be a defining issue for the 21st century and Pure Harvest believes that theme is a big investment opportunity. When you look at the numbers here, agri-tech startups saw a record year of financing last year with data from AgFunder showing that deals completed rose by 43% year on year to almost $17 billion. And when you break that down by region, take a look at this, the US, China, and India accounted for about 80% of global agri-tech funding. Actually, Tanvia, UBS estimates that this food innovation opportunity is going to represent a $700 billion market by 2030. So it's certainly a big sector to watch and there's a lot of exciting activity happening around it. And I'm not surprised by those numbers, Dan, because food is everything, right? It's survival. So I, I wouldn't be surprised that that's the kind of money that's backing uh, ventures supporting agri-tech. In fact, you know, just to give our viewers some examples, you've had Instacart in the U.S. raise $600 million in Series E funding. Brazil's restaurant marketplace, iFood, has garnered close to $600 million as well. And India Swiggy, uh, something that I've used while I was in India, is now valued at a whopping $3.3 billion after their recent round of funding from South Africa's NASPA. So they're big, big numbers supporting the food industry and the food innovation sector 